Okay. Teddy, many people would say that uh, fashion in sport is really something rather trivial. In fact, it's just the icing on the cake. But you don't believe this, do you? Harry, I think um, fashion is a very important thing indeed. That's just the uh, two shot, right? 82, take one. Teddy, many people would say that fashion in sport is something rather trivial. In fact, it's just the icing on the cake. But you don't happen to believe that, do you? Harry, I think fashion is terribly important. Not just because I'm a fashion designer, but it is um, a means of communication above all else with a public who is watching a big spectacle. And I treat fashion very much that way. I think it's awfully important when you're going to see a performer in anything um, to understand what they've got on so at least it doesn't upset you or antagonize you when you uh, first come into a stadium you see somebody who wants to think, oh yes, that's nice, because you understand it. So I think fashion is terribly important. important. Would you say that your part in sport in the world of fashion actually helps to bring people into the stadium? Oh, I think certainly. I think it helps if I, when I'm successful. I think it has helped everyone because the, the public like to think they're coming to see something new and exciting that they already partly understand. The performers have told me innumerable times that they feel they're going to give a better performance because they're confident in their appearance. I think everybody's helped. Tell me something about your problems of designing fashions for sport and tennis in particular. It must be very difficult uh, to incorporate each year's new fashion into the sport with which you're dealing. Well, that's my creed, that one should do so. Um, tennis is a very repetitive game and uh, fans are very faithful so that they come back and they see the same people quite a number of times. Now, if they're going to look exactly the same, I think it's going to be boring for everybody. And so I do try each season to put the international trends of fashion into sport. And they, of course, this is difficult. Uh, tennis clothing is a terribly small area. The dress is only very tiny. And then there are uh, psychological things like um, the, all tennis players' personalities. There are certain things about every fashion that they may love or they may actually not like. So it's, it is a, a job, but then I think everybody has a job to do, and most people have difficulties in the job somewhere. I suppose this year, hot pants, I assume, being the big fashion talking point, probably not so difficult to uh, work these in. <coughs> They're very easy to work in, um, except that, of course, I was the guy who killed shorts 20 years ago, because they, uh, on their own, they're just a bore. I mean, everybody in shorts looked, except for their legs, they looked like exactly like everyone else in shorts, whereas in dresses, the dress is different. And then there are... Um, psychological things, like hot pants is a con con contentious word with a lot of girls who, some, uh, the very fact that so many people like it means there are people who don't like it. It's got a sort of yeah. sexy connotation. It's got a sexy connotation, exactly, and whereas we all have sexy connotations, and most of us like them, there are some who deliberately don't like them, and one has to watch it. Right, shall we have a look at uh, some of this year's fashions designed by Teddy Tinker? 83, take one. Teddy, many people, I think, would say that fashion and sport is something rather trivial, but it's just the icing on the cake. Uh, but you don't happen to believe that, do you? I think you've got to have everything in fashion, Ken. You've got to have icing on all cakes, otherwise cake, cakes are jolly dull. Um, underneath... I'm not Ken. Um, damn, sorry, <laughs> fellas. Sorry. <laughs> sorry. Ken <laughs> Carpenter. 84, take one. Teddy, many people, I think, would say that fashion and sport is something a bit trivial, that it's the icing on the cake. But you don't happen to believe that, do you? Harry, I don't think it's um, only the icing on the cake. I think all cakes have to have icing. Um, you've got to have a bit of fun in everything. But underneath the fun, it's got to be serious. And um, I regard fashion very, very seriously. But uh, I do like to have a bit of fun, and I certainly like, to, in all fashion, to have a bit of sex. This is, this is, if you wish, the icing that people sometimes pick on. Uh, to me, it's a matter primarily of communication with the public, especially as I address performers who are seen by millions of people. The public must understand what they're looking at, and th that's one of the reasons why I try so hard to make uh, tennis players' clothes that people already uh, half understand from what they've read in the fashion newspapers. Do you think it would make any difference at all to Wimbledon, for instance, um, if Teddy Timlin wasn't there to design the girls' clothes, if they just came along in ordinary sports gear, would it make any difference to the attendance at Wimbledon, for example? 
Well, I think that's, uh, you know, you have a great knack uh, of asking interesting questions. This is a, a year when I'm cutting down my um, so-called stable considerably f over, after the many years I've been doing it. And I, I've already seen um, um, some of what I call other people's dresses. And um, I think there's a great difference. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us something about the problems that you have as a fashion designer in getting the, the current mode into sports dresses. Well, um, I have to, uh, I, I want to get the current mode, as you exactly put it, into everybody's clothes. But I have a great belief, and I'm sure I'm right, that every tennis star is a personality in their own right. There are two girls who are in any way alike, and um, it's my job to project their personal image through the generality of a world trend. Now, this is a problem, this presents problems. Uh, girls who want to look sexy because that's the way they feel, girls who are but don't want to look it, and girls who aren't and aren't, period. And it's my job to analyze all that. So that is a problem. Just before we talk about this year's fashions, just tell us, how did you first become interested in this business of making people look good in sport? Well, I was terribly lucky. I was born in the golden era of great star personalities. And um, immediately after the first war, I think everybody acknowledges that the, that the world was absolutely illuminated by personalities in every sphere. And I happened to be on the Riviera where Suzanne Longlet lived, and she was, of course, one of the greatest and the most colorful personalities tennis has ever seen. So a lot of the um, image that she projected, which I used to goof at daily in my youth, uh, rubbed off onto me. And I think now in my old age that everything she did was right for tennis. And so that, uh, many of my beliefs and the things I try to teach the girls it's really are the, the, the Longlin doctrine of 50 years ago. It never occurred to me before that Suzanne Longlin was a leader in fashion or was in any way a sort of uh, sex kitten because uh, I only ever see old black and white pictures of Suzanne Longlin. She doesn't look, if I may be rude, uh, particularly glamorous. Well, she was, in fact. I think she's, uh, she was, um, of course, the picture, the quality of pictures it wasn't in any sense then what it is now. But um, she was uh, like a, a, a comet, really. She flashed through life. She died when she was 38, and all the period of time when she was on show, um, she made it a show. I mean, she, she, she virtually made Wimbledon, she made tennis, and she would have made anything she was interested in because she had that sort of manner, that sort of projection. And above all, the greatest performer probably the world has ever seen at the game, which just counts as well. <laughs> you put your finger right on that era, which you after the First World War, as when your sort of thing began. Yes, and then died. And my um, dedication was to resuscitate it when I started in active sports in 1947 after the board of, of, and regimentation of the, of the wartime clothing. I felt that was what was needed. We had to have an absolutely new look. And my tennis look was coincidental with the Dion new look, because he felt the same about the big world of fashion that I felt about sports fashion. Well, this year you've got the, I suppose, the hot pants look, have you, which uh, must be one of the sexiest fashions ever designed. Uh, this can't be too difficult, I would assume, to uh, incorporate into tennis uh, gear. No, it isn't, it isn't difficult. It's only difficult um, to keep out um, the vulgarity aspect completely, because this is one thing I insist on doing. And again, like you see, vulgarity is in the eye of the beholder, and one has to be very careful um, to just play it down the middle and be sure that the girls are able to project the, if you wish, sexy appeal that well, this year, I suppose, Teddy, the theme must be hot pants, which uh, surely is one of the more sexy fashions that's uh, hit us in recent years, but not too difficult, I imagine, to incorporate into tennis design. Well, I'm having a few problems, Harry, but I, I don't really admit them. Um, one has to have, I don't know whether one can describe it as controlled sex, the, the borderline between something sexy and something vulgar is terribly sensitive, very, very hard to define. I think vulgarity is, is like beauty, it's in the eye of the beholder, and it's my job to assess what the beholders are going to either condemn or enjoy. Um, in the Gassi Moran era, which is now 20 years ago, good gracious, um, I was accused by many people of putting vulgarity and sin into tennis. I had letters telling me I had put sin into the fine old English game of tennis. Well, okay, so that's the way a lot of people thought about it. I don't want to um, feel that hot pants are sinful, but I know quite a lot of people hate the word, and so my tennis girl is wearing shorts, and if somebody thinks it's more exciting to call them hot pants, well, good luck. 
When you say that uh, some people don't like calling hot pants, do you mean players themselves? Oh yes, yes, certainly. Yeah. Oh yes, 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 certainly. I think uh, you know, as I said in the beginning, um, uh, some girls are sexy and don't want to talk about it. Some girls want to talk about it and aren't. And some people are genuinely both. And the clothes have got to reflect this. All right, then let's have a look at some of the sinful 1971 Teddy Timbing designs. <laughs> <laughs> It was all right, wasn't it? It was well worth doing the rethink. Oh, yes, yes. Uh, I felt I felt much yeah. happier. You had... Do you think it would make any difference if, for instance, at Wimbledon there wasn't any Teddy Kenning to do the designs and the girls just came in ordinary sports gear? Yeah. Another one again? Do you think it would make any difference at Wimbledon, for example, if there wasn't any Teddy Tending to do the designs when the girls just came in ordinary sports gear? Okay. Just tell me some of the difficulties, Teddy, you have in incorporating the current mode in fashion into uh, sports gear. Before we look at this year's uh, designs, Teddy, tell me how you became interested in bringing fashion into the world of sport. Before we look at this year's designs, Teddy, just tell me how you became interested in bringing fashion into the world of sport. Right? It's not quite what it was, but it's, it's right, isn't it? Yeah, okay, okay. I must say, I'd never thought of Suzanne Longo as a sort of sex kitten of the 20s. But then I've only seen these old black and white pictures of her, and I must say, she doesn't look to me to be particularly glamorous. Well, I suppose this year, the, uh, the fashion is hot pants, um, a rather sexy fashion, but they're not difficult, one assumes, to incorporate uh, into tennis design. Okay. Well, this year I suppose the fashion is hot pants, a pretty sexy fashion, but I suppose not too difficult to incorporate into tennis design. This year's theme right through the whole collection is mauve, and again on a matter of communication because everybody's been wearing mauve right through the day and most of the night. Julie Heldman uh, has got a sort of what one might describe as a tunic with slits in it over um, short stroke hot pants and um, she's always had a particular feeling for butterflies so we put a butterfly on her tunic and she has some rather pretty butterflies also on her shorts. Is that okay? Yeah. Is that enough isn't it? Yeah. Take two. This year's theme right through the collection is mauve because again on a matter of communication mauve is something everybody understands they've been wearing it all through the day and most of the night um, so I put it in the tennis clothes as well. Julie Hellman's wearing a sort of tunic, one might call it, with slits around the hem and over it, um, over shorts come hot pants. She's always had a particular feeling for butterflies. I've used them with her before. We've got a pretty butterfly on her tunic and also on her shorts. Virginia, um, no, I'm sorry, I've got to be a bit slow about it. Let's start again. You'll have to get the form, Yeah. I'm always very particular what um, I make for Virginia Wade, and she's very particular about what she wears. And uh, we're calling her shorts specifically shorts, because I think this blends better with her character. She's got her tunic it's, uh, with a slit in a different place, and uh, shorts underneath, again trimmed with a mauve and buttoned down the side of the bodice. Judy Lawton's got a sort of uh, jacket-type dress over hot pants, and again with a mauve trimming, naturally, everybody's having it this year. Um, it's been very interesting working for her because she's a, a, a much bigger, a broader sort of mentality than some of the players, and I have to express quite a different image in her clothes. Yvonne? Yvonne Goulagong is tremendously interesting because, of course, she's 
different in so many ways from anyone else in the tennis world. Um, she's got a very, I think, very pretty little scallop dress. Um, she's not quite used yet to wearing much colour, and therefore I have to control myself and make her more white dresses. But this one is a tunic over hot pants and scallops all around the edge of all the edges. We try that one again. Uh, running a long, now. right? Take two. Yvonne Gulligan is particularly interesting because there's so much about her that's quite different from any other tennis player. Um, she hasn't quite got um, used to the idea of having many uh, colored trims yet, and so I am particularly concerned to give her something that's still all white and yet effective. This year's uh, jacket over hot pants has got scalloped edges all around uh, the pants and the dress. Take three. Um, Yvonne Gulagong is particularly interesting because there's so much about her that's quite different from any other tennis player. Uh, again, she's not um, completely sympathetic yet to a, a lot of color trimming, so I'm concerned to make her something very pretty that is still all white. This year's dress over her hot pants has got scallops all around the edge and no color at all. Take four. Yvonne Gulagong is particularly interesting because, of course, there's so much about her that is quite different from any other tennis player. Again, she's not quite... Um, sympathetic with much color in terms of trimmings, and so I've been concerned to make her all white dresses that um, are still pretty. This one has scallop trimming all around the edges of her dress and her hot pants. Yes, when is a um, very faithful Scottish patriot, and so sorry, we are... Yes, sorry. Yes, sorry. Winnie Shaw is uh, a very faithful Scottish patriot, and so we're always um, concerned to put a pistol somewhere, and this fits in terribly well with the mauve theme. Um, she's got a pretty little dress that's gathered around the waist and has a mauve edge, and on her cardigan we have put her traditional pistol. I'm very sentimental about Cherry Panton because of, uh, she is the niece of um, Joy Mottram, who started all this in the early years after the war. A t tremendously pretty girl, and I've tried to make her a, a, a very pretty dress. She, this is a, a breath of what we think is a pretty future ahead of us. Lovely. End the world, Texas.